Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cricket Company podcast. Today we have an extremely special guest with us, someone who's regarded to have one of the sharpest cricketing minds in the country, someone who followed his heart and went after his passion and today is the man behind some outstanding broadcast content you see before, during as well as after a cricket match on Star Sports. We have the Cricket Encyclopedia Mr. Sarang Bhalera with us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Great, sir. So, sir, uh, we know that uh, you started off as an engineering student. You worked in Infosys for two years. So then, sir, how did the entire pivot towards a sporting career and in particular, a cricketing career happen? What is, what is your story, sir? Please share with us. Well, first of all, uh, like any engineer, I wanted to uh, get a good job and do well, earn some money and uh, possibly go to the United States. Uh, but uh, the problem here was I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. Uh, nothing against Infosys, but it was a, a nine to five job. And uh, I think it was devoid of challenges, I felt. So the one of the things that I wanted to do when I... I was in Infosys was to develop some hobbies. So I was playing cricket and uh, reading a lot about it. And uh, I started a blog which wasn't really doing well. Uh, But I wanted to write, I wanted to express uh, my thoughts about the game. Uh, And there was one uh, cricket quiz at Infosys. And uh, I cracked that quiz. I answered almost everything. And it wasn't an easy quiz. So I just... uh, I introspected and I thought possibly this is where I should make a career because I was, I didn't even prepare for the quiz. I later learned that a lot of the participants had prepared and uh, they wanted to crack the quiz. But here I just walked in and uh, could uh, answer almost everything. I think I missed just one sitter, but uh, apart from that, uh, I think I I pretty much answered everything. So there, uh, I think I had... uh, uh, a thought that uh, why should I uh, give up on this uh, if I am good at this and I did not know what to do. So I just wanted to take the plunge. MBA was some other thing which uh, was in my mind uh, doing an MBA and uh, becoming a manager. So it was just another uh, story in the IT sector, uh, engineering, IT, MBA. But I thought uh, if I could just give myself an, a couple of years and see where this is headed. I did not really have any plans. I did not know what to do. So I think somewhere uh, my inner voice told me that, okay, you should take a chance. And I took a chance. So that's where it all started, uh, cricket quiz. So I urge everyone to participate in <laughs> cricket quizzes if they... You know, it, it's accident. It, it is an accident, happy accident. But I think... I took a chance and it came off. Right. I think that's that's wonderful. So I think a lot of people aspire for that, but are not able to make up their mind. So, sir, after after Infosys, I think you forged your path. You worked at Sports Kira, then I think Z as well. So how was how was that journey like? Did you at any point in time regret changing your stream uh, because of various issues, or were you like, okay, this is my calling? Well, uh, then what happened was I actually left my job and I had absolutely nothing in hand. And uh, that was the time when I was uh, trying a few things. Uh, The number one thing being uh, wanting to join some MBA college. But uh, I had uh, plans of taking a break and uh, enrolling myself for a course. So I joined Xavier's uh, in Bombay, uh, the journalism course. So during that time, I attended the course, but my entire attention was going and meeting the editors, wanting to learn uh, things. And uh, if there was a match, say in uh, Mumbai, one K day or Brebon Stadium, maybe write a report and submit it to the newspapers. So I started uh, from these little things. And uh, while I was studying uh, in Xavier's, Sports Kida had this wonderful platform where you could submit the articles. Obviously, it was not about how much you got paid or what is the uh, 
salary or nothing of that sort. It was just exposure. So uh, I was uh, enrolled as a writer. I could I submitted my uh, pieces to Sports Kida. I wrote feature content, editorial pieces, opinion pieces, match reports, stats pieces. So it uh, gave me freedom to just explore. Uh, and and they would uh, promote the articles and that's how i started having uh, uh, i think i should say i started having a footing in the industry and it was just a small start nothing great i i joined twitter in fact a few people told me that why don't you join twitter and i was like what is twitter uh, this was in 2012 so I joined, I started uh, sharing the articles, I started writing a bit. And uh, then after I finished with my college, I had a couple of offers in hand. Uh, so that's where I took up uh, Cricket Country. Right. Um, uh, I was uh, blessed to have a good editor and uh, colleagues who were uh, same age as mine. And uh, I think that sort of started uh, you know, the uh, freedom and independence that I got early on in my career. And by doing all of that, I figured where I'm, uh, where my strengths lie and where I'm not good at and uh, where I needed to work. So I think that's very important. I got good bosses and uh, they would just push me. And sometimes that's all that you need uh, when you have a lot of enthusiasm within you. You want someone who can push you. So I think I was very lucky uh, and uh, that's how my journey started. And I never, uh, to be honest, I uh, never really regretted. There were times when I regretted uh, leaving the IT sector because there was, uh, number one, there was, uh, you, I mean, it was comfortable life. Number two, starting something all over again is not very easy. It requires tremendous amount of patience, I, I would say. So sometimes when the going got tough, I was like, uh, maybe this wasn't really wise. But then I had given myself a couple of years. I anyway wanted to uh, give it a shot. Right. That's a, that's a very so, inspiring story, sir. Yeah. From starting off with Sports Kira to now being the producer at SAR Sports, how did that finally take place? Okay, so uh, I was absolutely not looking for a job at Star Sports. Uh, I was happy writing articles. Uh, this was at India Times. And all it takes at times is one article for, for you to do well. And I had written a couple of them. So one was 25 cricketing facts. Uh, uh, some, yeah, that, that was the article, some 25 cricketing facts. And I think it got a lot of uh, mileage. It got a lot of shares and uh, and one was on Rohit Sharma, I think, when he uh, scored 264. Uh, that time I had written an article and it was a quick article which uh, uh, got viral. And I think one of the, uh, someone in Star Sports noticed that and uh, I got a call uh, and they were looking for people for 2015 World Cup. Uh, they wanted to go big. Uh, that time they had plans uh, doing World Cup in many languages, English, Hindi, regional languages. So they wanted to go big. So I think that's when around uh, 2014, uh, November, I got, I got a call from uh, Star Sports whether I'd be interested in joining Star Sports. And I had uh, doubts because I did not have television experience. So I told them that I don't have television experience, but uh, people over there were very patient, very cooperative. They're like, uh, you can learn this on the job. Uh, even we are learning. So, so for all our viewers watching this, can you please explain what exactly is your role at Star Sports? Like what exactly does a producer do? Well, there are various kinds of producers, non-live producers, there are show producers. And there are match producers. So uh, the roles are different. Now show producers, they look after every aspect of the show. How the set looks. They work closely with the people involved uh, behind the scenes. Uh, then they design the content, the flow of the show. What all uh, is needed, say, from the stadium, from the ground. All of that, uh, they coordinate. They have uh, the 
VTs, as as you can see the uh, say small packages that you see. So they look after every aspect of the show, the show producers. The match producers, what they do is they look after the content of the match. Uh, when you see what graphics are, they come on air, or what the Hawkeye package is. So all of that, a match producer looks after that aspect and rostering the commentators, which stint, which commentators commentates. So it's a teamwork. So uh, that's that's uh, the long and short of what the producer does, and uh, it's a tough job in the sense that you have to plan, you have to prepare judiciously, well in advance. You have to uh, talk to the experts, and uh, so that's that's what uh, the and we are blessed to have very 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 big names uh, in the commentary box. So their inputs, how to incorporate their inputs and put it on air. So that's the role of the producer, is to give definition, is to give uh, the shape to how the content looks on air. That's the responsibility of a producer. Right. So that sounds 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 much more tougher than people usually think it is. Usually it's like producer, even though you're in the backstage, producer is the one who's calling the shots. So yeah, that's a very important role. So sir, you spoke about... I mean, the we, are just team, we, are, we are just a team. So right. it's just that uh, effort. Uh, right. So that, that's what, uh, like in sport, one person cannot define everything. Uh, it has to be... You know, every person involved in the behind the scenes is equally important, be it the audio assistant, be it the lights person, the director who gives the camera angles, right. the talent directors who's commentating. So it's a teamwork. Everything has to come together for the production aspects and broadcast to look good. Right. Absolutely. So, so you spoke about big names in the commentary box. I'm sure your role uh, makes you uh, go around with the bigger superstars of the game as well. So, do you remember any anecdote, any fanboy moment which came to you through this role? Well, initially, uh, it was a fanboy moment, but quickly I realized that uh, in order to earn someone's respect, your work must speak. Uh, I wouldn't deny that looking at you know, former captains and uh, superstars of the Indian cricket right there. Uh, it was a bit overwhelming. And uh, quickly I realized that it's not about clicking photos with them and getting likes on social media. That's not going to work. It is only going to last till your post becomes old. And that's the uh, adrenaline rush. And, you know, so I understood that in order to earn their respect in order to and in order to do well i have to work hard i have to uh, be good at what i do so after that i think it has not been fanboy moment ever it's just uh, doing my job well and i think when you do that you get that respect uh, that's what is very important that's what it matters it's not important if I hang out with these people or I uh, speak well or I click a photo with them. That's not important. Uh, but if I can contribute to the feed, if I can contribute to uh, the match broadcast, if I can help the commentators in some way or the other. And that's how I look at it now. Rather than getting overawed by their presence, uh, which I think is a bit overwhelming initially when you just uh, start your career because you know, I've been a biggest cricket fan possibly. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, cricket has been my life uh, like most of the people and I grew up uh, watching uh, every match. Uh, how much I, uh, ever I can I could watch uh, to see them in the commentary box. Uh, uh, so that that's a little, you know, uh, right. too good to be True. But quickly, you have to come to terms with the reality and what your job is. So, yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, you spoke about how you've been one of the biggest cricketing fans. So, which has been your favorite cricket match or a particular moment from a match which you always remember? Oh, there have been many matches. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, if I can uh, 
start talking about the matches uh, this will be another episode but uh, 2011 world cup i think uh, that six from dhoni and the entire campaign that we had that was absolutely brilliant uh, i mean world t20 2007 no one expected india to win but they managed to win but 2011 was one tournament where uh, i mean watching every match getting to know uh, you know so much about the sport that time when i uh, was in infosys back then and i was ardently following every match and i think india's win in the world cup possibly gave me believe that okay i can chase my dreams so i had that particular uh, you know i was following it closely uh, because uh, i knew that india would win the world cup the way they were playing and just to see the semi final fi- even the quarter final for that matter what a game against australia we had never beaten them for 24 years in the world cup so to beat australia I, uh i was confident after we won against australia that we are going to win the world cup so those few days uh were very very uh, special as a cricket fan the semi final final quarter final that stage of world cup so i think i remember most of the things from those matches i think all of us can really relate to that right yeah. absolutely So, sir, like like you said, twenty four years India not beaten Australia. You're able to conjure these statistics very easily. Also, you're famous on Twitter for doing these kind of things. I think you had written all the teammates of Sachin Tendulkar, all the teammates of Virat Kohli. Mm. So, where does this knowledge come from? Have you read books, or it's just the normal following of the game? No, I've not read books, but uh, I used to have BCCI. statistical annuals uh, as a child it's a big book that comes every year you know those records uh, come all the bcci matches that are being played so the book comes so i used to remember most of the score cards as a child uh, the ranji trophy and dilip trophy all those uh, liste matches so i had this sort of uh, knack of remembering the score cards and the scores so it just started off as a hobby and uh, i maintained a lot of score cards myself so it just ha- so happened that i would uh, easily remember the matches who made the debut what happened in that game who scored how many runs so i think i had uh, i was working on some score cards and i just thought okay why not list out all sachin tendulkar teammates and i just did that just out of hobby i did that and uh, i knew the number 141 because uh, he had played with 141 uh, indian teammates and uh, some uh, so in all he has played with i guess 988 cricketers in his uh, career so i think i knew that uh, number 141 so i just gave myself uh, it's an opportunity i could get around 120 names easily then i had to go back in the 90s remember a few team uh so uh i think sara sindhu mukherji was was one asia cup i remember so like that i utpal chatterjee 1995 sharjah he had good challenger trophy in india spent right. uh, for matches in sharjah i played his last at jamshed against new zealand so all these matches started to come in my mind and all those uh, names which are generally difficult to get i could get them and i just put it out on twitter uh and in fact i just wasn't expecting this to go viral uh in fact sachin himself uh, replied on that right so yeah so I, it's it's a it's a good small world i, I guess the cricket fans uh, unite on twitter it's like one family and uh, as long as i contribute to uh, whatever uh, in whatever way on twitter or otherwise be happy to do so so that's what makes me happy and it was just one uh, lucky thing that happened i had never planned for it never wanted attention also but got a lot of attention so, yeah. right that is that is something i think nobody would have imagined anyone to do because it takes a lot of memory and a lot of knowledge so that was that is perhaps why it got that much attention 
and deservedly so. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So for all the youth coming in now, people who want to enter the sporting industry, what advice would you like to give the youngsters who want to enter this field? Well, first of all, preparation is very important. A lot of them want to enter the uh, industry without doing groundwork. Now, a lot of people want to be writers. But uh, first of all, how much do you write? Is there a blog? Is there some body of work that you have? Do you read? What do you read? Um, do you know history of the game? Do you know... Uh, certain ways in which you can engage audience. So all this has to be done initially. I mean, today industry uh, wants people who have done things and done things well. If your blog is doing well, for example, uh, there are websites that will hire you. There's no rocket science, but if you don't have body of work, it is that much more difficult to enter the field. So you have to be prepared I mean, going to a college is one thing, getting a degree is one thing, but have you done something for you to manage the job? Do you deserve it? And if you deserve it, you will get it. So it's simple. You have to do the hard work. You have to do uh, things which uh, you know, may not be interesting doing day in and day out. So that's what is important rather than which company you go to who hires you, what is your CTC, those are secondary things that is going to improve if you are good at your work. No one can take that away. So that's what is very important. You must know what you want to do. You should do that. And uh, it's great time to fail when you're young. That's the best part about starting out young. Uh, if you fail, the stakes are not high. You can learn. But if you want things without doing uh, putting in the hard work it's very difficult so that's what i want uh, people to understand you have to do the hard work and you have to do it consistently that's that's important right i think that's a very important and very valuable lesson you've given us sir and i think that, that that's where we conclude i think a lot of viewers will take back a lot of stuff from this interview hopefully and again, sir, thank you so much for joining us. It was an honor, a privilege to host you. And keep inspiring, sir, because you are the one a lot of us look up to for inspiration to get into the industry, sir. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. All the best, uh, Vishan and Tanvi, both of you. Thank you and you, sir. I hope whatever you aspire to do, you do it well and you know, all the best. Thank, thank you so you, much. Sir. Got to learn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Cricket Company Podcast.